Thank you for joining me. Today, I'll be doing a reading and interpretation of chapter 14 of the book of John. It is some of the most prolific words ever spoken by Jesus Christ the Nazarene to us, the human race, God's race. Let us review. Chapter 1, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way ye know. Thomas saith unto the Lord, We know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Shew us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Now, let us stop there. It sounds like Jesus Christ the Nazarene is speaking to his disciples and letting his disciples know that I am not doing this on my accord. I am doing this for God the Father. Understand that I come from the Father. And I am doing the work and the will of the Father now. In order to know God, you need to listen to what I am saying to you. Comprehend what I am saying to you because I'm speaking to you from the bottom of my heart. There's still more work that I need to do, but I'm speaking from you because I love you from the bottom of my heart. Jesus is saying, that if you know me, then you know who God is because God is in me. God is inside of me. And I need you to believe that God is inside of me. Because if you believe God is inside of me, if you truly believe that God is inside of me and I am not speaking of myself, I am not bragging on the stuff that I've done because I'm not doing any of it. It comes from within me. It comes from the Father that is inside of me. It comes from the Father that I am inside of. It comes from the root. This is where it comes from. It is almost as if we pass blessings down to our children by talents and gifts. It is the same. They get those talents and gifts from their mother or their father their grandmother or their grandfather. It is the same. And we must understand when Jesus is saying these things, Jesus is letting us know that everything that I am doing, it is not because of me. No, it's not because of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. It is because of God, the father that is inside of me. And it is very hard for us to understand that what we see this person doing, it is not from them. It is from the 
talent that was given to them. It is from the spirit that has been passed down through the lineage, not the legacy, but the lineage for posterity's sake, for the sake of God. We must see this when we look into each other that we were made in the image and in the likeness of God. And this is what Jesus is telling his disciples. And this is what the disciples were telling us. And we must listen. We must adhere so that we may tell future generations this with full clarity and full comprehension. Do not fear. Listen to what Jesus is saying. These words I speak are in the red writing. And Jesus spoke these words himself. Jesus is asking us to simply believe. Simply like you believe your name is your name. You believe your birthday is your birthday. That's it. Just believe. Picking up. Chapter 14, verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very sake of works. Now that is a shame that Jesus had to tell his disciples, believe me for the very works that I have done. Believe me for the sights that you have seen. Not because I am telling you. If you can't believe me, because I am telling you these things. Believe me because you have seen the works that I have done. But you should not stop there. You should just believe because you know who God is. You know what Jesus has done for you. You should hold on. Chapter 14 verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. We shall do greater works than what Jesus Christ the Nazarene has done. Jesus spoke these words to us, to our generation. We shall believe that we shall go about and do greater works than Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, has done. And the same works. But do you believe that you have the capacity, the authority, the dominion to do these works? The word dominion does not mean dominance. No, it is domain. It is your home. It is your home, the place you love, the place you protect the place you hold sacred, the place you keep the people you love. God gave us dominion over this planet. Dominion does not mean dominance. Let us understand what Jesus is saying to us. Let us understand. Let us pick it back up. John chapter 14, verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more but ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. Jesus is letting us know anything that we ask for, anything we ask for in the name of Jesus Christ, we shall receive because the Holy Spirit is right there to give it to us. God is right there. Jesus is right there. This entire time, this is what makes this some of the most prolific words 
Jesus has ever left us with. Jesus is telling us, I have never left you. I am in you. God is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. That comforter is with you and shall never forsake you and shall never leave you. You ask for anything in my name and it shall be granted to you. Anything is what Jesus said. Jesus said these words. Do not settle. I don't care what anyone is telling you. I don't care what you're telling yourself. Do not settle because Jesus spoke these words into existence for you. For me, Jesus has already interceded. Don't you get it? Don't you understand? Think on this. Read these words for your own self. We are not left comfortless. Jesus said, I will come to you. John chapter 14, picking up at verse 19. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live. Ye shall live also at the day ye shall know that i am in my father and ye in me and i in you he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him and will manifest myself to him that right there what Jesus is telling us I will manifest myself to you not to anyone else but to you do you believe that Jesus is ready to manifest himself directly to you are you ready to find your relationship with God as an individual because you must find God for yourself even if you're a twin, you still came into this world one by one. You must understand this, that Jesus is ready to manifest himself to you. And also, you still have the comforter here with you. We are made in the image and in the likeness. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. John chapter 14, picking up at verse 22. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot. Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keep not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Again, Jesus is telling us at the end of verse 24, Chapter 14 of the book of John. That he is in us. The words he is speaking are not the words of Jesus Christ. They are the words of God. And Jesus has blessed us and given us these powerful words to speak. And Jesus said, I will manifest myself to you. Do you believe Jesus will manifest himself to you? Will you claim that Holy Spirit? Will you claim that comforter that is there? That spark that is inside of you? Will you claim that? Picking up. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. That right there. Ending of verse 26. That is powerful. How many people have seen on the altar say, do this in remembrance of me? Now, why don't you ask the Holy Spirit 
to give you the remembrance that you need. The Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit will give you everything you need, everything you desire. All you have to do is ask in the name of Jesus. You speak to God. You speak to God directly in the name of Jesus Christ by way of the power and grace and mercy of the Holy Spirit. And you shall receive all the things that you shall ever ask for or ever need. Picking up on verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father. For the Father is greater than I. Now what does that tell us at the end of verse 28? When Jesus tells us, Jesus Christ the Nazareth, tells us that his Father is greater than what Jesus Christ the Nazareth is. So you cannot sit here and tell me Jesus is not humble. That Jesus didn't realize he was on his way to the cross. You cannot tell me that Jesus did not realize he was on his way to the cross the entire time. But even before he got to earth, even before Jesus got to this earth, he understood he was on his way to the cross. How humble is this? Jesus has not even suffered his greatest sacrifice on this earth. And he is telling us the work I do is not mine. It belongs to my father. He took no credit, none for the miracles that were performed by his hands, his righteous God guided hands. And that is what Jesus is telling us that God guided the hands of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth. That is humble. We need to see that when we see our own parents, no matter how harsh they were to us. Were your parents harsher than God was to Jesus? Did you endure the suffering that Jesus did on the way to the cross already with full knowledge of the pain you would endure? No. We live day for day, second for second, randomized moments. Sometimes we have an inclination of what may happen. But Jesus knew the entire stratagem that God had laid forth. Now let us pick it up. Verse 29. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe hereafter i will not talk much with you for the prince of the world cometh and hath nothing in me but the world may know that i love the father and as the father gave me commandment even so i do arise let us go hence end of john Chapter 14. Now reading the ending part of this saying that we know people talk about so much the prince of this world. Now let's understand what God has left us with. Who knows us? He just told you. He just said. God just said. Jesus just said. Because God Jesus all in one hallelujah with the Holy Spirit just said the prince of the world cometh and hath nothing in me if the prince of the world has nothing in God nothing in Jesus nothing in the Holy Spirit that means the prince of the world has nothing in you plus you have domain over this world I have domain over this world as the human race God's race God knows us God knows who you are God knows us understand who you are in God let nothing tear you apart from God 
Jesus took no credit. Jesus gave all the glory to God. And this is what Jesus wants us to do. Keep your faith. Remain vigilant. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. Plan strategically for your life. Or your life will strategically plan for you. Amen. Amen. Amen.